Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome to part three of our Tasmanian tour while we're down here for the table tennis nationals which start on Saturday. I'm currently walking through uh, over 30 rooms or 30 rooms and hallways of a museum in Queenstown and it's absolutely amazing. I'm not going to film all the rooms or anything like that. Christine's actually done a bit of a walk through and even did an interview with the guy that's uh, the volunteer here this morning about uh, some of the history of mining in Queenstown and it's really interesting. Some of the displays are amazing. So if you're over this way, it's well worth looking in the old Imperial Hotel built in 1897. Uh, I made a mistake in our last episode. We actually had a meal at the um, Empire Hotel, which was built in about 1900. So we're loving these old hotels, but this one has been turned into a museum. They have a lot of local history of all of, a lot of the West Coast towns of Tasmania and all the mining exploits and a lot of general antiques and stuff too. Really fantastically well set out uh, and a perfect venue for it in a, in a historic hotel. So I won't feel much in here. If you want to see more of this, check Christine's channel. I don't know when her video will correspond with mine going up, but it'll be on there at some stage. I'll put a link underneath. And uh, yeah, we'll continue our journey today. We're going to head off to uh, Strawn, which is right on the west coast of Tasmania. And then I think we're going to go further up to Zeehan and head around Cradle Mountain. We're staying up around that way somewhere today and uh, we'll keep doing videos. But I'll just show you a couple of the rooms while we're here. What's that? My room? This is your room. Something I would like? Something, let's, yes. Let's What's have a look. machines for you? Oh, surely not. Okay. Oh, radios. We knew there'd be old radios somewhere and sewing machines. But it's beautifully set out. Everything's labelled. It's nice and clean. They've got heaters going in the um, both upstairs and downstairs. We're upstairs at the moment. And as I said, there's over 30 rooms all packed full of historical stuff, uh, sporting memorabilia, lots of just general old things. But, oh, that's a cool old radio up there. Gramophones, sewing machines, even a bit of a more modern 80s boombox. But, hey, why not? There's a lot of old clocks around. I've seen a few clocks. So you're all nicely laid out. Let's have a look in a couple of other rooms while I'm here, while I'm talking to you. And they have rooms segregated into various things. We're in, whoops, this one's dedicated to Christine. <laughs> Everything's dedicated <laughs> to me. Oh, we have some old TVs. Oh, and a more modern TAC CRT. Little portable down the bottom there. What's this thing? An old wooden pinball machine. Well, fancy that. They have a lot of relics from the mining days here. Queenstown and a lot of the west coast of Tasmania was quite famous for its mining exploits. Uh, initially gold, but then they found a lot of copper and silver. And the, the countryside around here is quite um, desolate and almost um, moonscape-like because of the, the continual mining over nearly a century. And back in the early days of of course, there was. They needed the wood for um, powering boilers and everything, and so the mountains got denuded of all timber, and then you ended up with all the slag coming out of the furnaces and everything. This is a music room. So lovely old display case here. The Queenstown Highland Pipe Band. I don't think they're in existence anymore, and it's great for somewhere for all the local history to go. We we're in the sporting room before. And they had so many old photos of sporting teams and shields and things. And a lot of towns really don't know what to do with unless they have a museum. So fantastic. There's a really early map. That's a town map of Strawn. So interesting. We'll be going there later on. This room has looks like there's a telephone there on the wall. Another console radio. Oh, there's a creepy person over in the back. There's a few creepy people around here. Uh, old Rolf downstairs was telling us that he likes to word the kids up to say, you know, did you see the ghost upstairs and that sort of stuff. So really, really nice. Very well done. Lots of honour boards too, which is something a lot of other towns kind of struggle to know what to do with unless they've got a local museum. And some of them, especially sporting shields and things, often end up in people's sheds and eventually the history gets lost. There's a roll of honour from Gormiston, which is a nearby small town. That's a brass band. Most towns had brass bands in the early days. And of course we have honour rolls from the Great War and the Second World War. 
and those that didn't come back. Mount Lyle, which I think either was an early name for Queenstown or because it was the mount next door and that's what the mine was named from. So yeah, lots of honour rolls. There's more in here. This little room is more of your Masonic Lodge stuff and certificates and things like that. So yeah, very, very well done museum. Fantastic, considering there's over 30 rooms plus hallways. If you're ever in Queenstown, by all means, it's well worth a small entrance fee to check it out. Oh, more creepy people. Maybe that's the pilot from our plane flight over. Don't know. No, I think he's Navy. Okay, while Christine's looking for George the Ghost, let's just pop into the kitchen room because it's got some great old stuff in it. Really nicely laid out again. And we have a bit of laundry stuff, an old mangle, a ringer, washing machine tub there, an early plunger washing machine that pretty much all you did was put your clothes in and operate a cone plunger up and down. Would have made a hell of a noise. A lot of sloshing of dirty water, I guess. And then a copper. We have always just known them as the copper. They had a copper insert and then usually a cast iron base which you lit a little fire under, boiled the water in the copper and I guess you washed your clothes in the, the hot boiling water. They're also really good as yabby cookers. We have some bottles. I've already checked out a lot of the bottles here. There's some milk bottles. There's nothing particularly rare as far as bottle collectors go, but great display. Lots of canisters. A very old uh, timber trough standing on its end. It's possibly even hewn pine because hewn pine is native to this area and quite a rare timber. And I think it probably would be because if you look at the grain there, hewn pine has a really fine grain. And I'd say that's possibly what it is. Close the ringer up the top. A baby's wash bath down there. A cast iron boiler on top of a cast iron stove. A glass washboard. We have a few of those in the shop from time to time. They also had tin and uh, just the rippled timber. But the last one I had in the shop was just glass. That looks like a real sort of 60s era Frigidaire stove. Much older setup over there. And of course, you're hanging food safes before you had refrigeration. You just basically hung your, put your food in these safes and you could put a, a damp piece of hessian over them and you had evaporative cooling through all the airflows. And of course, it kept the flies off your food. Nice old mantel clock there on the fire surround. What have we got in the corner here? Is that a coffee grinder or something? Or a corn cob thing? It's a bone cutter. Bone crushing machine. Yeah, interesting. Oh, there's a tag up top. Bone crushing machine. Interesting. Okay. A coal hod or scuttle. Very good. Lots more kitchen boxes and things. Okay, we'll just duck over this room. Last room in this hallway and we better get going because we've got to hit the road. This is the fire brigade room. The old hose reel used to have... They used to have fire brigade demos around Victoria. I don't know if they did them in other parts, but um, your local fire brigade would compete against other fire brigades in the district, and you'd have to have two men running, towing this thing along a track, and it'd unroll a flat hose, and then another guy would run behind and hook it up to a water mains, and then someone else would hook, grab the other end and run up a ladder and squirt a, a disc, and they'd compete. Uh, my grandfather and my father both were involved in fire brigade demos. I never did them. I don't know if they still even go anymore. My he, boys used to do it. He used to be involved in yeah, Kyabram, yeah. Our kids did them. I don't know if they still go now. So there we go. Oh, this guy doesn't look too healthy, does he? He looks okay the top end. His legs have wasted away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess that's just for medical training, isn't it? Okay, well, I think we've done it. We've been here for much longer than we planned to. We better hit the road. I didn't find George. And we didn't find George. So that was the Galley Museum in Queenstown. So I better get off the road, tick, there's cars coming and we're going to hit the road and head to Strawn and look at the mountains behind me. It's misty rain, but luckily our car's got a roof and a heater. So we made it down the road from uh, Queenstown to Strawn, more windy mountainous roads, beautiful countryside, uh, but you can't do anything fast in Tasmania and it rains most of the way, but we've got the Strawn here. We're on the um, I guess it's a, like a harbour or a port. It's, I think Strawn is the only 
um, coastal port on Western Tasmania, would that be right? Sorry. Would, would Strawn be the only coastal port on Western yes. Australia? Yes. Right. I'll show you a map, guys. Here's a good view of Western Tasmania showing a map. It doesn't really show the towns, but it shows that we're just about in here. And this... Uh, a map for them. Oh, I've got a better map? Okay, thank you. So here's a more localised map of where we are, showing uh, the towns, uh, Queenstown and Strawn and we're just on the port in there. And it's, uh, it's fairly, fairly isolated, this part of Tasmania. If you look down here, we've got the area we are here. Most of the southwest is uninhabited. And talking about hue and pine, it's only found in these small pink areas. Uh, so its worldwide distribution is very localized to here and that's why it's such a rare timber. And there's some beautiful works in this place here where we are now showing some magnificent timber creations and craftsmanship. And I'll take you around and show you some of the other pieces. There's a lot of stuff for sale here. And there's also some beautiful artwork on the walls, but coffee tables made from hue and pine are just magnificent. And it's very expensive timber because it's so rare and it's such a dense grain, it's very, very old. And I have only found a few pieces of small furniture in all my travels in Victoria that have been made from hue and pine. But uh, it's just magnificent, obviously great to work with, beautiful grain. And as you can see from this bowl, it's very close together, indicating that the trees it was made from were very old. So just beside the gift shop is another room here with some timber slabs of hue and pine. Beautiful table here with um, resin infill in the cracks and it looks amazing. This was made here uh, with a price tag of seven thousand, seven and a half thousand dollars. But what a beautiful piece and it's so smooth. It's beautifully finished. You can't feel the cracks have all been filled in. And of course the resin on the end, magnificent work. But even the slabs of hue and just cut out of the bush, uh, this one's been finished. That, so that slab of hue in there is uh, $3,000. It's probably a metre and a half tall. There are some raw slabs here, basically just cut from a mill and they're offering free freight, 24 kilos. I don't see a price on that one. But yeah, it's absolutely amazing timber. And because it's so rare, it holds a good price, as I said before. Here's a section here, and that's just rough sawn, but uh, smooth-ish. And then they've sanded this and finished it with What's it say here? A, a coat of organ oil, hard burnishing oil, and that leaves a quite a great finish. Absolutely beautiful. That one's not for sale, just a sample. So fantastic. If you're ever down in Strawn on the west coast of Tasmania, check out the Hewan Pine gift shop. And it's right on the edge of the, the bay here. I'm not sure what that's called. It's obviously a port of some sort. And just up the road a bit, is a magnificent old building that I think was the original customs building. It's now the post office. So some great history around here as well. So we had to take a piece of hue and pine home with us. What did you get, Christine? I got a chopping board. Beautiful. Something useful. Yep, very nicely finished. It's, uh, is it oiled or anything? What did uh, they say about that? They do use an oil. They did tell us what kind. Yeah, they did say not to put a hot pot on it because it's flammable. Oh, and it smells beautiful. You could just <laughs> eat it. Isn't that magnificent timber? Look at the grain in that. Fantastic. So that was a bit over $100, 120, but 120, yeah. but we wanted a nice souvenir and that should last us forever. Hopefully our kids It'll can enjoy last it. Us. Yes. <laughs> so we've just also had lunch. It's a beautiful little main street here. We actually had trouble finding the shopping center because it's kind of just along the wharf area. And there's lots of fishing boats out there and there's a few places to eat, some holiday units and some very old buildings as well. And uh, I think this was the Macquarie Harbour. I was looking for the name of it before. And we just ate over there, really nice spot to eat. There's a nice old hotel just further down. So we're gonna hit the road now and head out to the beach to actually see the ocean. And then we're gonna cruise up to a place called Zeehan. Well, we've made it about six kilometers out of uh, Strawn. We come to the west coast of Tasmania. It's uh, fairly windy, but hopefully my little dead cat thing on the microphone helps keep the wind noise away. There's more showers rolling in, looks a bit stormy there to the north. And the coastline 
looks fairly rugged further along. It's be there's a beach here, and uh, the surf's up a bit. I would imagine a couple of weeks ago they had a big storm through here, which threw a lot of trees down, did a lot of damage. This coastline must have been very turbulent, huge waves. Now, it would have been interesting to see. And further down this track, you can see more of the coastline. There's huge big sand dunes further along. Let me zoom in a bit. So some nice surf and uh, fairly rugged coastline, but probably mostly sand dunes under all the vegetation actually. So I was just talking to a local, he pulled up here to take his dog for a walk and he said, uh, a couple of weeks back, he said the water, the surf was that uh, rough and it blown right up, right up through this gully. He said he'd never seen it come up this far. So it's because uh, I think it's high tide at the moment. So you can see it would have uh, been a big storm surge at the time. A lot of trees down. And he said the road further along was actually been washed away. So um, yeah, fairly uh, fairly severe weather event from all accounts. So we'll finish this video up now with some footage of the road heading north to Zeehan. Uh, again, misty rain. Most of our travelling was in these conditions and for some reason the camera just does not like the road. It prefers the raindrops on the windscreen. Anyway, we had a nice drive up and we stopped in Zeehan for a look around at the history of that town. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.